What are the umbra and the penumbra? This is a quick little video to explain total solar eclipses, especially from the perspective of the flat earth debate. So let's take an overview of the video. First thing we'll do is just show you the basic umbra and penumbra diagram that you've seen many times. And then we'll take a look at what it will look like from the ground with a series of animations. Then we'll visit shadowandsubstance.com, uh, Larry Cohn's website. He's got really excellent visualizations for all 50 states. Wear protection. It's really important if you are going to go out to watch these eclipses that you wear uh, proper uh, eclipse glasses or just a solar filter over your, over your eyes. Then we're going to go to GeoGebra and we're going to actually construct the Umbra Penumbra diagram uh, live. And you can see how you'll do it yourself. Then we're going to unpack the diagram um, from the perspective of, of Monique, who's standing on the ground looking up at the sky. What do all the pieces of that diagram mean? Then we're going to cover two debate issues. Um, aren't the rays supposed to be parallel as one? And then is the shadow going to go west-east or east-to-west as the other? So let's start off with our umbra penumbra diagram. And you've seen this a bunch of times. Um, basically, you've got the light source, the sun, something that's blocking the light, the moon, and then you have four tangent rays that we're going to talk about a little bit later on, uh, creating the umbra and the penumbra. So let's take a look at a couple of animations about what it will look like from the ground. So you know that the upcoming 2017 um, uh, eclipse is going to cross the continental United States. Uh, the path of totality will, will cut through a bunch of states. We're going to zoom in on Missouri, and you can actually see the size of the umbra uh, on the state of Missouri. When we take a look at the following animations, which are going to start three days before the eclipse, it's important you understand uh, the moon we're going to see is called a wanning crescent moon. So the crescent is going to be getting smaller in each successive animation as the moon gets closer to the sun, and we're going to finally end up with a new moon on the day of the eclipse. So, and this is just a, a cute little animation. Three days before the eclipse, two days before the eclipse, one day before the eclipse, and then lastly, uh, on the day of the eclipse. Now we're going to take a look at uh, much better visualizations um, at shadowandsubstance.com. So he's got uh, fantastic visualizations about what a viewer would see on the ground uh, from the perspective of somebody standing and just looking and facing the, uh, facing the sun looking up. And he's done this for all 50 states, uh, including uh, some visu visualizations from space. So we're going to zoom in on the Missouri one. And so I just took a couple screen grabs of the animation um, as the eclipse passes through Missouri. One of my favorite visualizations is the one that he did from space. So this is uh, taken from so many million miles away, uh, such that you can, you're can you sort of looking over the shoulder of the moon. But if you take a look, there's the uh, umbra and the penumbra diagram that we've, uh, that we've seen. Next, uh, we're going to talk about protection. So please don't go out expecting that you're going to see the moon blocking the sun. You are absolutely not going to see that if you just look up. So if you expect to see that, what you'll actually see is a blazing, blinding sun. It will not look any different. The sun will absolutely not look any different as you look up. But you may know the eclipse is happening, and you may stare at the sun, um, squint at the sun, and you really try to make out the eclipse with your naked eye, and this is what you're going to end up with. So uh, please don't do that. Please wear uh, eclipse glasses. Now apparently there are some counterfeit eclipse glasses going around. So how can you tell if you've got a good pair? Well, if you have a 100 watt light bulb and you put on your glasses and you put your face up just inches from the bulb, you will not see any light whatsoever. Uh, then you'll know you've got a good set of eclipse glasses. And this is what the uh, effect might be um, looking through the glasses. Next we're going to go to GeoGebra and we're going to construct live a umbra penumbra diagram. So you're going to go to geogebra.org and then you'll click on the geometry under ma the math calculator selection. Alright so here we are in GeoGebra. I'm going to click on geometry 
and it gives me a blank screen. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create the land. So I'm going to use the line tool and just click on two points that will create a line. Then I want to create my moon. So I'm going to use the circle tool. There's my moon. And then I'm going to create my sun. Next, I'm going to create my points of tangency, my lines of tangency. So I click on tangents and all you need to do is click first on one circle, then on the other circle. Now I have to go back to the arrow tool, the move tool, um, so that I can manipulate this. So this is a diagram that you can, you can play around with. Uh, you can see how the, the geometry changes um, as you move these things around. Now a couple interesting things in the flat earth model, the sun and the moon are the same uh, diameter. So if you, we make the sun and the moon the same diameter, um, what you may notice is that the umbra, the umbra doesn't really change, change size. Um, so you, you get an interesting, uh, interesting effect. The sun and the moon are the same size. The umbra is the same size as well. Um, another thing you can do is uh, in the heliocentric model, uh, we've got a much bigger um, much bigger sun, of course the much bigger sun is really far away, um, but you'll notice that the umbra is getting very, very small over here. Um, last, I want to uh, show you a um, pre-made diagram that, that I did. We're going to be taking a look at the eclipse from the perspective of, of Monique. Um, and so She's facing south, so her east is to her left, and then west is to her right. And what I've done is I've uh, colored the um, the umbra and the penumbra. So the she's now in the uh, penumbra, and it's colored gray, and then now it's it's uh, colored black for the umbra. So next, we're going to unpack the umbra and penumbra diagram. So what does Monique see from the ground? First thing we're going to do is we're going to pretend that her eye is a laser scanner, like something from one of those science fiction movies. So she can scan from, uh, from left to right. So here she is looking up at the sky, looking at the sun, um, which is partially obscured by the moon, and then she can scan left to right. And that's how we're going to sort of explain what's going on in these diagrams. So here it's before the eclipse has started. Um, and as she looks left to right, what does she see? Well, she first sees the sun, and then it is not covered up by the moon. She won't actually be able to see the moon. The, the new moon is invisible to the naked eye, or even with, with glasses. So what she'll see is the sun, um, and it is completely untouched by the moon. But the moon is to the right. It's just invisible. Next we have this uh, C1, which is first contact. And again, Monique's not going to see anything much uh, different. She's going to see the sun, but this is the point where the moon just starts to touch um, the right side of the, of the sun. Now, please notice where Monique is. She's now in the penumbral area, the area I shaded gray. And what will she see as she looks up left to right? She first sees the left side of the sun, and then the right side of the sun is being obscured by the moon. Now also notice in this diagram that the umbra is to her west, and it's coming. If she's in the path of the totality, the umbra will hit her next. And now she is uh, in the middle of the umbra, and if she looks left to right, uh, she will not see any piece of the sun from her perspective. The moon is 100% blocking the sun from where she's standing. All right, so that basically is unpacking the diagram explaining it. So now let's tackle two debate issues. The first is, aren't the sun's rays supposed to be parallel? This is actually a very good point, because when you look at the umbra and penumbra diagram, those lines do not look parallel. So what we need to do is create a scale model. And I uh, have created a video that's on my channel. Uh, it's called Scale Model Math for the Earth, Moon, and Sun. And if you go uh, to that video, there's a link to this uh, spreadsheet where you can type in various sizes up for the moon and it will calculate everything else for you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus in on the, the Earth moon distance. Now I wanted this to fit on my monitor. My monitor is about 1900 pixels wide. And so I just kept typing in moon diameters until I had something that was 
you know, pretty close to 1900. I, I wanted it to be a little less so the diagram would fit on the screen. Uh, so I ended up with um, 1.7 centimeters, or, or I'm going to call that 17 pixels diameter for the moon. The Earth moon, I'm, yeah, the moon Earth distance is uh, 1800 pixels, and then the Earth diameter is 62 pixels. All right. So then I, I created this, uh, and I'm using Apple Keynote, uh, so I can you know get this thing correct to the pixel. Um, and so I created this diagram. And let me uh, make the, the lines a little bit darker in case you couldn't see. Um, so this is absolutely uh, to scale according to the heliocentric model. So um, if you want to include the sun in this, the sun is about 400 monitor widths uh, to the right. And again, uh, it's very, very difficult to picture this stuff to scale. So the question was, I thought the lines are supposed to be parallel. Well, if you round them to the nearest degree, they are they are basically parallel. So the question is, um, how come we have this diagram at the bottom if the one on the top is the war, one that's more accurate? And the, the answer is, it's uh, in terms of explanation. Um, if you look at the diagram at the top, it is really, really hard to see what's going on. In fact, we can't even see the sun. Um, you can't include the sun in this diagram. So the diagram on the bottom uh, explains perfectly where the four lines of tangency are going, um, from the sun and the moon, and then how that creates the umbra and the penumbra. So the diagram at the bottom is, is done for uh, instruction purposes. The diagram at the top is, is to scale, but very hard to read. The next debate issue is, is the shadow going to move west to east or east to west? So let's revisit this, uh, this eclipse animation. Again, the, the, the sun is overtaking the moon. The moon first obscures the sun from the, the right. Um, and this was what Monique sees before she's hit the, uh, the totality. The, 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 she's in the path of totality, so it is coming. And what does she see when she looks up? She sees the left side of the, of the sun, and then the right side of the sun is being obscured by the moon. So what does this mean? Well, we all know that the sun and the moon rise in the east and set in the west. We also know that during the eclipse, the sun basically overtakes the moon. So they're, they're both moving... They're both moving east to west in the sky, but the sun is overtaking the moon during the eclipse. So if you're in the path of totality and you're facing south, the moon is first going to cover the right side of the sun, uh, and then the moon is going to move to the left, or, or the sun moves to the right, but basically it's being obscured from, from the right. So the umbral shadow is, is to our right, and if we're facing south, that means it is to our west. The umbral shadow is to our west as it approaches. So therefore, the eclipse shadow will move from west to east. Now, the interesting thing about this is that it, this is absolutely true in both the flat Earth and the globe Earth models. The only thing that matters is what we'll see when we look up uh, in the sky. So again, just to revisit the, uh, the animation, uh, both the sun and the moon are moving east to west, but the umbral shadow is going to move west to east. So I hope that uh, was helpful for you. Please remember to be kind to one another. Uh, especially if you disagree um, with each other. Uh, that there, there is no, no need for anything other than love and kindness and patience. Thank you.